November 13th, 2022, an intruder broke into a three-story house on Kings Road in Moscow, Idaho. Four beautiful souls lost their lives that night. Zana Kernado, 20 years old, a loving sister who was positive, lighthearted, and was majoring in marketing, with her boyfriend, Ethan Chapin, one of a triplet, whose father said he loved everyone and everyone loved him. They started a scholarship to the University of Idaho called Ethan Smiles. Best friends, Madison Mogan, a Steelers fan who smiled, danced, and laughed her way through life, and Kaylee Gonzalez, a middle child who was competitive, tough but fair, loved country music, and her dog Murphy, a mini golden doodle, planning on becoming a teacher. There were two survivors, Dylan Mortison and Bethany Funk. Bethany, upon hearing noises, opened her door several times. She saw the intruder and noticed that he was thin with bushy eyebrows. Frozen with fear and uncertain if the intruder saw her, she locked her door, and due to fear, the police were not called until nearly eight hours later. The police cleared both Bethany and Dylan from any wrongdoing. That night, the police walked in to find that each had multiple stab wounds, some with defensive wounds, but no sexual assault. It looked like the assaults happened between 4 and 4.25. Left behind was a knife sheath that had male DNA on it. There was also a video of a white Hyundai Elantra that may be involved. On December 31st, 2022, Brian Kohlberger was arrested. It was his DNA that was found on the knife sheath. He owned a white car and cell phone data showed Brian was out at the same time as the murders. His alibi, and I quote from his lawyer, Mr. Koberger was out driving in the early morning hours of November 13th, 2022, as he often did to hike and run and or see the moon and stars. Hi, welcome everybody to our reading on Brian Koberger. We're going to look into the cards to find out what happened. Was he responsible for killing those four people? If so, why? And if not, will the evidence prove that he didn't do it? It's going to be a very interesting case that's coming up very soon. I always watch Emily D. Baker. Hey there, I'm Emily D. Baker, the Internet's go-to legal analyst, breaking down the legal side of the pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. Law nerds. I kind of think of myself as a law nerd, even though I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> And I love her show, and she's going to be doing uh, she's going to be doing commentary on it. So I'm very interested in seeing how the case is going to work out. So, magician. In the center, we've got the magician. He's able to do anything. See, the magician can be manipulative. The magician can be that person that you know. Um, can do stuff, but they don't feel it. They don't feel compassion. They don't feel sorrow. It's that feeling of like, um, like a sociopath or, an, you know, a narcissist and all those words that you can use, but it's a separation of, of feeling and what goes on in the brain. So this was somebody who was smart. Obviously he was getting his PhD and he was, you know, um, he was correcting exams for professors and stuff. They said he was a bit of a jerk about it. He was hard. He he marked the book. He marked the test hardly. So, um. So he does. He he kind of has everything available to him to have a wonderful life going forward. Crossing him, the tower. The falling down of everything, everything in his life falling apart. And this is something you can't control. This is something that you you have to go through. It's not that you can't stop it from happening. And I think that the magician showing up, this shows the mental. This shows a mental separation where he was um, mentally unstable and had been planning and had been planning for a while to do something like this. Now, why he chose these particular people, I think it was just a random kind of thing. He had passed by the house a couple of times, maybe saw them living their best lives and just, you know, had some kind of resentment there because there is a feeling of resentment there. 
underneath it all, he's got the charity. He's trying to figure out which way is he going to go. Is he going to go to jail? Is he going to get away with it? Because he has a lot of information. That's a lot of information that he's going forth with, especially when it comes to the cell phone, the cell phone towers, and the banging off the cell phone, cell, the cell phone towers, because they're trying to prove where he was. And if they can prove he wasn't near the, where, where the murders happened, then he got an alibi. But his alibi that he put out was that he he likes to go on late night runs and he generally likes to go, you know, run or jog or just look at the moon and stars. That was his alibi that he was out that night looking at the moon and stars. In the past, he's walked away from everything that everything that he had built up. This is his decision in his mind that he had to, something broke in his head. He's something clicked in his head and he had to, he wanted to pull off the perfect murder. He thought that he could pull off the perfect murder and walk away from it all. On top of it all, it's the heartbreak. It's just the pure heartbreak of this situation. The poor people that were, were hurt, and God bless, there was two that were um, to that survived, but I mean, they're getting so much flack for being surviving survivors because it took so long for them to call the 911. So it's a, it's, you know, you never know how you're going to react in a situation when your life is on the line. Like we don't know with, whether they were intoxicated at that time or what was happening in the near future. We got the page of swords. So this is going to be him in court. Uh, he does have some minor um, things that he can bring forth. And I think that's going to have to do with the cell phone and trying to prove because he's just got to put doubt, right? With the Page of Swords, this is going forth with the court case because it's been a while and we're at the Page of Swords. So it's at the beginning of it. This shows that um, they're ready to fight. They're ready to prove some kind of alibi for him. He is the page of wands. He feels that he um, can do this. He thinks that he has pulled off the perfect murder and that he's going to be able to walk away, that he's going to be able to get enough doubt. The people around, um, they just want to see justice. They want to see this case come to a quick and swift end because it's been dragging on for so long. People just want there to be justice. For him, he's looking at temperance. He is really hoping that the, the, the evidence that is brought up that can prove that he might have been somewhere else, or at least puts the possibility there, that that would be enough for him to get off. That's what I'm feeling. So he's hoping that Whatever they bring forth, especially the evidence of the DNA uh, being on the sheath of the gun, of the knife. Um, so yeah, he wants. He's hoping that it'll whatever they say, he'll be able to have a comeback, and people will have doubts in their mind. Um, we got the Ace of Cups. There's going to be a lot of emotion. The families are going to be very involved. The families are going to want to see justice happen. And my friends, justice will happen. He's going to be found guilty. He's going to be found guilty. Why did he do it? Why did he do it? Why would he do this? I'm telling you, I I know they say that they he they don't know each other, that this is random kind of thing that, you know, and at one point they were saying she he was stalking her, but they proved that that wasn't true. But I'm telling you, at some point he had met up with one of the girls and had some kind of interaction. And for whatever reason, he knew that they lived there and he passed by it. This was something that was planned because it's something from the past coming back up in the future. And these, when, when the lover's card come up, that means that your actions are going to affect your future. So I think that he inside of him being a sociopath 
decided that it was time for him to pull off the perfect murder because he thought he was smart enough to do so, and that was not the case. So I do not see him, I see him having to go to jail. He's gonna have to pay society. There's gotta be a lot of information coming out. And it's like, cause you see this, um, this is a lot of quick information. So I think this kind of represents that it's gonna come down to the cell phone dingings and stuff. They know that he left evidence there, the DNA on the sheets. So that's there. Is that enough? Um, and again, we're having like this balancing out. He's hoping that whatever case they have, that their case kind of matches so that it kind of negates both of them. But why did he do it? Because he had to. This is a, this is a mentally sick man because at the core of it we have the magician and the magician on his good side can be a wonderful manifesting beautiful card but in its dark energy it could be manipulative and it could be and it shows that this is somebody that could commit a crime and has the means to do so so that is our reading. I just want to do a quick read for entertainment purposes only. And as always, I have our unity candle lit for each and every one of us. I'm going to have to start cutting this down a little bit, I think. Anyway, thank you for your time. You know how much I appreciate you. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and put on the bell notification for when my videos come out, if you'd like. And uh, as always, take care, cheerio, and God bless.